Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is Coulomb's Law and Force Analysis. Here's what we wish to learn. How can we combine Coulomb's Law with vector physics and algebra skills in order to conduct a force analysis of some pretty complex electrostatic situations? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. This video builds upon our Coulomb's Law video that came earlier in this series. There's a link to that video in the description section if you need to review it. In this video, we're going to take it a bit further using Coulomb's Law. Here's the law. It states that the electrical force of attraction depends upon the quantity of charge on objects A and B and the separation distance between them. The proportionality constant K has the value given. The fact that the units are as such means that when we use Coulomb's Law, we need to use the value of K, value of Q in units of coulombs and the value of D in units of meters. Here's some things you need to know to be successful in this video. First of all, opposites attract and likes repel. You need to understand that a net force is simply found by summing the individual force vectors on an object. You need to understand that vectors like a force vector can be added and they can be resolved and typically we'll use things like Soka Toa and the Pythagorean theorem to do so. You need to understand some things about units like what the microcoulomb or the centimeter is and how to convert to more standard units used in the equation. And finally, you need to understand that this video isn't for everybody. We're taking it several steps of sophistication further than many of the videos in this tutorial see series. This video is really designed for a student in Honors Physics or IB Physics or AP Physics 1. If you're in a course like that, stay tuned. You're going to learn how to solve some pretty sophisticated problems. The first problem involves three charges lying along a line as shown. Their coordinates are given and the quantity of charge on objects A, B, and C are also given. We wish to determine the net electric force on charge B, the middle one there. To do so, I need to first figure out well, what are the individual forces acting upon charge B. First of all, A being oppositely charged of B will pull up charge B to the left. I'm going to call this F of a on B, and I've labeled it on the diagram with an arrow. Then there's the force of C pulling B to the right. That's FCB. I've shown that on a diagram. Now the net force is what you get when you find these two individual forces and add them together. And finding the values of these individual forces involves Coulomb's Law. Here's how we do the FAB calculation. It's set up for you there. You'll notice the K, and then in the numerator, the charge on A and the charge on B converted to units of Coulombs. In the denominator, I have my distance in units of meters. It was 16 centimeters, so I call it 0.16 meters, and I square it. I use my calculator, and I find out it's 6.83 newtons and some change. I can repeat the process for the force of C on B, pulling B to the right. I use the quantity of charge on C, the quantity of charge on B, and I use the distance in between them. Now, that's a little subtle. Uh, C, C is at 25 centimeters, B at 16 centimeters, so they're 9 centimeters apart, so the denominator is 9 9 centimeters, really 0.09 meters, and I'm squaring it. Now I get my calculator out and find out what that is. It's 19.20 newtons. I now know the two individual forces acting upon charge B. So now we can calculate the net electric force on B. It's simply the sum of the individual force vectors. Since they're going in due opposite directions, calculating the net force involves subtracting the smaller from the larger number, and when I do that, I end up getting approximately 12.4 newtons to the right. This is a similar problem, only this time the three charges happen to be forming a right angle to one another. It's charges A, B, and C, and their values are given, and their distance of separation are given. We wish to determine the net electric force on charge B. So we need to think in terms of what are the individual forces. There's the force of A pulling B to the left, and then there's the force of C attracting B and pulling B downwards. We'll call these FAB and F. CB, and we can calculate them from the given information. Now the quantities of charges here in this problem and the separation distance are exactly the same as they were in problem one. So we'll go through this a little bit faster since we've done it already. Here's how you calculate the force of A on B, and here's how you calculate the force of C on B. You get, of course, the same values that we got in problem one since the given information is the same. 
So I have now calculated the force of A on B and the force of C on B. And what I have to do is sum them up, add them together. One of them goes to the left and one of them goes down. And I'm going to add them like I add any set of two vectors in head to tail fashion. And I'm going to draw the force of A, B first and then follow it up with the down force. You can do it the opposite order. This is the one I've chosen. And then the net electric force is the vector sum of these two. So it goes from the tail of the first vector to the arrowhead of the last vector. And it happens to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So when we add right angle vectors, we would use Pythagorean theorem to add them, which says that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the individual legs squared summed together. And, and so I have 6.83 and I have 19.20, and I square each and I add them together, and that's equal to the hypotenuse squared. Comes out to be 415.34 and some change. If I take the square root of both sides, I'm calculating the net electric force, the length of the hypotenuse, and it's about 20. 0.4 newtons. Now that's just half my answer. I need to calculate the direction of the net electric force. And that's the reason for the theta inside the triangle up there at the arrow at, at the tail of the net electric field vector or net electric force vector. So what I'm going to do is use the tangent function and say tangent of theta is the side opposite 19.2 divided by the side adjacent 6.83. And I'm going to calculate theta as the inverse tangent of 19.2 divided by 6.83. When I do, I get 70. 0.4 degrees. That's not my direction, but it's useful information for finding the direction. I say the direction is now starting from west at 70.4 degrees south of west, and that's the direction of this net electric field vector. Or you could simply say give the angle rotated from east counterclockwise, and it's 250.4 degrees. In problem three, we have two identical balloons of known mass that are hanging by strings. They're, 30, they're 74 centimeters apart, and the distance diagonally from the center of the balloon to where it's supported above is 140 centimeters. We have to determine the quantity of charge on the two balloons. So I begin with a force diagram, or free body diagram for my balloons, and I draw the F graph down. I know there's a tension force up and to the left on the balloon A, and then balloon B is pushing balloon A to the left, so I draw the electrical force. Now whenever I have forces that are at angles to the axes, I resolve them into x and y components. So I'm going to draw that triangle right there. And the y component is shown and the x component is shown. And what I know is that that y component has to balance the force of gravity. Since the balloons are at rest, forces balance out. And since I know the value for the mass of the balloon, 7.6 grams, I can calculate the y component. I just go 7.6 decimal place move three places multiplied by 9.8 and I get the 0.07448 newtons as the y component and I also know that the horizontal forces must balance so fx is equal to f electrical now this triangle is the crux of the entire problem because if somehow I can calculate f electrical I can find the value of q using Coulomb's law so I have to be able to get f electrical out of this triangle and to do so you need to know the angle theta that's shown there so how are you going to get theta? And the trick is to look at this diagram above. And notice that the strings make one big triangle. And if I cut the triangle in half, I have a right triangle. And I've done that here. You see it drawn. And I know that the horizontal side of that right triangle is half of the 74 centimeters, 37 centimeters. And I know the hypotenuse side. So I should be able to calculate theta in that triangle. It's the same triangle as our force triangle over here. So I say cosine theta is equal to the side adjacent over the side hypotenuse. Cosine theta equal 37 over 140. And theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 37 over 140. Use your calculator, 74. 4.675 degrees. So here's my original force triangle, and I now know the value of theta. And I can use that value of theta to calculate the fx value. I say tangent of theta is the side opposite over the side adjacent. And the side opposite I've already calculated is the force of gravity. I can substitute that into this equation. So the tangent of 74.675 is equal to the force of gravity, or y component, divided by the fx. Now, three, a couple of steps of algebra will get me to the value of fx. And here's the steps that you're going to do. You're going to multiply both sides of the equation by fx to remove it from the denominator on the right side, and then divide through both sides of the equation by the tangent of 74.675, and you end up getting 0 0.020409 and some change. Newtons is the value of fx. Now this is equal to the electrical force since they're both directed in opposite directions horizontally. 
So I'm now on the home stretch, this very long problem, and I'm trying to calculate the value of Q. I know the value of D, and I just calculated the value of F electrical in this Coulomb's law equation. But what I know is that the two balloons are charged with identical t amount of charge, and so QA equal QB, and I'm just going to call it Q. So QA times QB equal Q times Q, or Q squared, and I'm going to rearrange Coulomb's law to look something like that. I know F electrical, I substitute it in, I know the value of D is 74 centimeters, I change that to meters and square it, I substitute that in, and I substitute in the value of k. Now I'm looking to solve for q, so I'm going to do some algebra. Two steps here, multiply both sides of the equation by 0.74 squared, and divide both sides of the equation by the value of k. And the equation turns into this, and I'm solving for q. So I evaluate what the right side of this equation is, and it comes out to be 1.24818 times 10 to the negative 12. I do that on my calculator, and I take the square root of both sides. I end up with 1.14 1.114 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, or 1.1 microcoulombs. In problem 4, we have charge A and charge B lying 100 centimeters apart along a line, and we want to know where along this line would you put a third charge such that the net electric force on it would zero, be, be equal to zero. So I'm thinking of some point where you'd put charge C, and that point would probably be maybe x centimeters from A, and if it's x centimeters from A and A and, C and B are 100 centimeters apart, then it would be 100 centimeters minus x, or 1 meter minus x from the other charge. So I'm looking for the value of x for which the force of A on C is balanced by the force of B on C. So I begin the problem like that by saying that the force of AC equal the force of BC. And I can find these forces using Coulomb's law. So I write the expression for FAC and FBC as shown. And I can simplify this equation. I can divide, I can cancel out the k's and I can cancel out the qc's. And the whole equation simplifies to this. Now I want to solve for x. I know QA, I know QB, and so theoretically we should be able to do this. I'm going to begin by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. Perfectly legal operation as long as you do the same thing left and right side of equal. And, and that turns the equation to this. And then I'm going to cross multiply both sides of the, equa uh, of the equation. And I end up with this. And I'm going to solve for x. So after cross multiplying, I'm here. And what I'm going to do is try to solve for x. So I'm going to begin by distributing the square root of qa to both terms inside of that parentheses. And then I'm going to try to get the x terms by themselves on the same side of the equation. Now that they're there, I'm going to factor out the x. And then I'm going to divide through both sides of the equation by what's in the parentheses on the right side, and I end up with this. Now that's about as simplified as I can get with my equation. I now have an x equal equation, and I know what the quantity of charge on B is and what the quantity of charge on A is. So I take these values and I substitute it into this equation. And when I do, I get 0 0.4608 meters, or roughly 46 centimeters. So the answer to where must you place this third charge in order for the net electric force to be zero is 46 centimeters to the right of charge A. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, could you help us out with a like or subscribing to the channel or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below? Now here's an action plan. Here's three resources from our website. Each one of them, there's a link in the description section. Any one of these things would be a good next step for following up on this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.